Tonight on Real Ghosts. In Kansas, students are running for their lives when a fraternity house becomes a haunted house and one pledge refuses to be denied membership. Then, a nightclub in Kentucky serves up good times, plenty of country music, and some uninvited guests. What dark secret lies buried there? Next. Reaching out from the world that lies beyond, they glide through the portals of our imagination. Yet some say they don't exist. They have been seen in the wink of an eye. They vanish in the pound of a heartbeat. They are beyond life, beyond death, and to many, beyond belief. But now you will meet people who have seen them, walked with them, and even embraced them. Real people with real stories of real ghosts. There is often a vast difference between belief and actual experience. Students at Kansas State University say their experiences have made them believers. Ever since I saw Animal House, I thought it would be a blast to join a fraternity. From what I saw my first day as a pledge, I knew I was in for some wild times. I had no idea. You know, I don't think she knew how to handle the love machine. What's that smell? Ah, it's a pledge. Ignore Mr. Charm. He just learned to walk upright last week. Adam Wagner. Need help with that stuff? Uh, Josh Pickering. No thanks, I can manage. Hey, uh, what was all that about? Uh, another chapter in our illustrious history. Termites, show Mr. Pickering to the attic. The attic? Yeah. Well, you don't think we want to contaminate our air with a ledge? Uh, termites, your new big brother. He'll show you the ropes. It's not so bad. You'll get my old bunk. Come on. Uh, look, I don't mean to be a wimp, but uh, do girls always run out of here screaming? Oh, she probably saw Duncan. Duncan? Uh, he's our resident ghost. I mean, I've never seen him, but uh, he's supposed to look out for pledges. Well, here you go. Welcome to the racks. Good luck. Thanks. Cool. Hey, you're welcome. I'm Michael. Hi, I'm Josh. Now, ladies, the fun is about to begin. These are toothbrushes. That is a dirty kitchen, and you are pledges. I thought hazing was illegal. Not while I'm around. Go. I know what I saw, man. I'm not doubting you. It's just so bizarre. Yeah. Here. I wanted to show you this earlier. I thought Lewis did it. Welcome to uh, Phi Delta Gamma. Hasn't changed. Oh, you lived here? GI Bill in 46. You were a Phi? Well, no, when I lived here, it was Theta. Josh Pickering. Wally Marshall. Would, uh, would you like to take a look around? 
Yeah. Thank you. Down here is the least used room in the house, the library. Apparently, this used to be some sort of a sacred room. There's no question as to what happened that afternoon. Wally Marshall saw something in that library. But what? Nice going, boys. What'd you do to that old geezer? Short circuit his pacemaker? Uh, Lewis, is there something we should know about the library? Yeah, there is. You're both sleeping there tonight. <laughs> Having fun yet? He's got to be here somewhere. Do you think someday we'll look this dorky? Huh. Someday? <laughs> Lewis must have crashed by now. I say we split. I know this guy. He's the guy that had the heart attack. And look. Duncan Palmer. Razor's on stun. Bye, Captain. Make sure they pay for that lamp. Don't you see him? It's right there. I don't see anything. Do you? Nah, man. Guys, we all know what happened to Lewis. When's he coming back? Whenever. He doesn't know. I agree with Mike that we need to get this thing resolved. You know, I actually feel sorry for the guy. Wow. We don't want this to happen again. Let's do it. Join hands. A lot of guys said this seance thing of Mike's was a lame idea. But Duncan was trying to tell us something. Duncan, if you're here, we summon you. We feel your pain. Speak to us, through us. Concentrate on the candles. It's getting cold in here. You wish to join the Brotherhood? I wish to join, Brother Wallace. Then you must walk the gauntlet? God. 
Some of us still don't believe the spectacular events actually happened, but it all made sense to me. Wally Marshall was responsible for Duncan's death, a hazing incident that was covered up. Duncan only wanted to belong, which is why he still hangs around the fraternity. For some reason, he latched onto me, which is why I've made this decision. <sighs> That's it. My eyes are fried. Good night, man. You sure you won't reconsider? You're really gonna move out. <sighs> Good night, Mike. <sighs> Good night, Duncan. We've got to get up now, 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 You don't have much time, 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 time. You've got to get up. Damn, 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 damn. You don't have much time. time, time. Mike told everyone Mike, I saved their lives. On. It was time to set the record straight. We're gathered together to honor a brother. There's only one way we can thank you. We took a vote. We want to make you one of us. Forever. Josh. You should have been given this a long time ago. Wear it with pride, Duncan. Brothers. Nice work, man. Welcome home. Just outside the campus of Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas, is the Pi Kappa Phi House. Here we are now in the room where Duncan was actually killed. As rumor has it, he was kneeling down over here on the floor during a paddling incident, and he accidentally looked up and got hit on the back of the head with a paddle. Well, after the blow to the head, the blood supposedly came over and hit this wall, and ever since then has been seeping through red, so we thought maybe wallpaper would cover it up. Well, after we wallpapered it, still didn't work. You could see blood outlines and uh, we actually saved some of that when we tore it down and this is what we call our blood ball. This used to be a completely beige wallpaper and now you can see how the red has come through. Larry Keller had a late night encounter with Duncan. One night sitting in here brushing my teeth with another guy in the house getting ready for bed doing the normal chit chat stuff whatever guys do before they go to bed. We used to have a fan in this corner over here, and we had different outlet or different lights that had outlets. And on the last outlet, the fan was hooked up, and we had it going, usually to air out the room. Well, in this particular instance, we're brushing our teeth, and the fan turns on by itself. Goes for about 15 seconds on high. Next thing you know, it shuts off. We come over to investigate, and the fan is in the off position the entire time. And in about the same amount of time that it would take someone to walk from the fan over to the door, door slams. That's my closest encounter with Duncan. The night of the fire is still fresh in Joel Pickering's mind. When Duncan woke me up during the fire, I uh, 
saw him walk by the bed. So then I jumped up and looked down at the bed, which I could see smoke was just rolling up out of this. And to this day, I believe it was Duncan that saved our lives. Sergio Lopez lived in the house for three years. A fraternity brother of mine was sleeping in that bunk right there. One night when he heard the door open, he heard somebody walk up the steps, walk across the aisle, hearing the floor squeak. He swears he didn't see anybody. He believes it was Duncan. And to this day, my friend refuses to come up here. Occasionally, the members of Pi Kappa Phi go in search of Duncan. Oh, great and mystifying weekend. Is there a spirit here with us now? A couple guys got up on the table and said Indian style and had the board between them and tried to call Duncan. Well, nothing was happening. We couldn't figure out why. And not till after that, we found out somebody had a Bible in the room. And uh, as soon as he left, it started working. We said, uh, what's your name? And he spelled out uh, Duncan. And every time we would say his name and try and call him, the wind would start howling and our candles would start flickering. It was pretty rough there after we played Ouija. It really put in a lot of guys' minds that he is real and he is here in the house. And it really makes you wonder, you know, he could be sitting right here next to me and I won't even know it. At a reunion of the Phi Gamma Deltas who occupied the house in the 1970s and 80s, it was clear that Duncan had been haunting the house for years. Granted, it is an old house, but when you hear doors closed that are supposed to be locked, coffee cups falling off the shelves, we don't have an explanation of what happened, but something happened. To this day, Duncan continues to haunt the frat house. His spirit stuck somewhere between the living and the world of peaceful souls. I have no idea what exactly his purpose is. Um, as far as I know, he likes it here. A grand tour of America's most haunted people, places, and things when Real Ghosts returns. All over the nation, people are on a ghost watch. In Connecticut, a family say they were terrorized by a malevolent ghost. A ghost who focused his demonic attentions on the children. It all began when the Macaulay family moved into their suburban dream home. I felt like there was a presence. Somebody was watching me. She goes, something is watching me. It's touching me. I can feel it. The phone used to ring um, at all hours. And you'd pick up the phone, and it would be just static. So you start to wonder what really is going on. <laughs> Soon the terror began to escalate. We would all see things together. The children would see things. We would all sit there as, as a family and see these things together. So we're all not becoming mentally ill at once. The Macaulays are convinced that a demonic spirit was terrorizing their two children. He was like telling me to hate God, don't trust my parents, they're liars, God's evil and stuff like that. The nightmare continued and the Macaulays realized their children's lives were at stake. And one time my son, he woke up and he started yelling for us, and you could see his arm extended ahead of him, and he was being dragged across the floor by something you couldn't see. One afternoon, the ghost went too far. The man told me to go out the window and hang there, and I really trusted him, so I listened to him and I did it. And all I could see was the fingertips of my son hanging out the second story window. The Macaulays went for help. But even after an exorcist visited their home, they still decided to move out. Today, they run a support group for other people terrorized by ghosts. People ask us, well, what credentials do you have? We said we had five years of on-the-job training. In North Arlington, New Jersey, a family was being terrorized by the ghost of their murdered daughter. It all began when Tony Euling's teenage daughter, Lisa, joined a street gang. After she decided to quit the gang, she disappeared. After several days, I get a call from police detectives from Newark that they wanted to speak to me. They came over and they said they had found the body of an unidentified white girl. And sure enough, it was my daughter. She was a very loving and a very caring person. Why they want to do something like this to her, I'll never know. At the same moment that her body was found, her father saw her ghost. I see my daughter appear to me face to face. She came to me in about six seconds and faded and came back. A few days later, as Tony tried to sleep, an apparition appeared and Tony was forced to fight for his life. 
Something was choking me around my neck and hit me over the head with something. I don't know what it was. I wanted to let out a scream, but I couldn't scream. Terrified, Tony arranged a seance with a professional medium and soon discovered just who was haunting their home. Not his daughter, but her killer, a man murdered in a bar fight shortly after he committed his crime. He says, I'm sorry that I helped kill your daughter. I didn't mean to do it. Will you forgive me for what I did? Tony forgave him and the hauntings ended. Lisa's mother is certain that her daughter is finally at rest. I says, I think God loaned me an angel for about 20 years. And then he decided he wanted her back. So, I mean, I can't question what God wants. And the Ewling's advice for other people faced with real ghosts? Don't be afraid of them. See what they want. Sometimes they come to you to protect you or to tell you how much they love you. Finally, in Atwater, California, a World War II bomber still flies on a ghostly mission, piloted by a friendly ghost named Arthur. Here we started getting calls uh, in this area about uh, people seeing lights and things on in the aircraft. We could see in the cockpit area up here that it was kind of like a, a glow. One of the prize aircraft in the Castle Air Museum is this vintage B-29 bomber. Soon after it arrived at the museum in 1981, people began to hear strange noises and see locked doors opening and closing. And then a ghostly figure dressed in a brown flight jacket began to appear. It made you feel like, oh, man, I want to get out of here. I'm scared. You know, I didn't want to just take off running and if somebody saw me like, hey, what's this guy, nuts or what? Eyewitness after eyewitness reported the same phenomena. And finally, after an exhaustive check of records, it was discovered that a crew member had been killed on board the aircraft. Apparently, he refuses to leave. His purpose is to be guardian angel of the museum. To the people who work there, Arthur is welcome to stay as long as he wants. It is said that when a house is built on haunted ground, ghosts will linger within. Few of us ever check the history of our property, even though it might hold a dark secret. Come on, darling. Let's get this over here. Die game and die hard. It's your choice. give you this offering. When Bobby Mackey and his young wife were looking to start a country western club... Well, Don, here we are. They weren't concerned about the past, just the future. Is this great or what? Hey, buddy, it's great. Come here. Now we get one of the mechanical bulls, we'll put it right over there. Yeah. This bar, we can use this for the bar. Great. It's a little messy right now, but I'll get it fixed up. Oh, that's a step. I think get a couple pool tables and put them over here. And then, those bright lights and country music. <laughs> Every journey starts with a single step. My mama told me that. And that spring day when I first saw the club, I thought we'd taken a step in the right direction. Well, I was wrong. And all the folks are dancing down here. Okay. Yours truly will be right here where he belongs, in the spotlight. <laughs> I'm okay. The wonder this place is so cheap. <laughs> no. That ain't the only reason. Excuse me? Name's Carl. You must be Bobby Mackey. How'd you know my name? Oh, well, it's no secret you're moving in. 
I just thought I'd roll out the welcome wagon and uh, sign up on a list in case you're hiring. Well, let's talk later. Oh, this is my wife, Janet. Meet you. Hi. Would you folks like to take a guided to tour? This place is sort of a hobby of mine. Sure. Janet? Sure. You know, I could have the power on for you by tomorrow. That Stand first day, every, every Carl day showed us around the place. He knew it like the back of his hand. All over the place. You want to see the basement? Honey? Kai? Uh, ma'am, in your condition, I'd stay up here. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Nothing up here bites. <laughs> Nothing much. This place used to be a slaughterhouse, Mr. Maggie. Well, you can call me Bobby. Lord knows how much blood's been spilled on these floors. Mr. Mackey, don't come down here alone. I don't want you working so hard. Bobby's got enough help. Yeah, okay. not hallucinating. Carl saw it too. Well, then you're both nuts. You just don't get it, do you? There is something wrong with this place. Janet, honey, believe me, the sooner this place is cleaned out, the better. Now, I know we're all a little stressed out, and you with the baby and all. She's right, Bobby. You gotta move slow here. The things happen when the people who move too far, too fast. No, I'm serious. The guy that ran this place in the 30s, he was murdered. Shot by his own daughter. Then she killed herself. And that's not all. Back in the 1890s... No, now it's you who doesn't get it. You know how many crappy joints I had to play? How many drunks I had to dodge? How many cheap, no-count club owners I had to beg in order to get paid? All so I could save up enough money to buy this place. And I swore, honey, one day I was going to get off the road and bring the road to me. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Bobby was right. We opened right on time, and I've never seen him so happy. I wish I could have said the same thing. Come on, sugar, drink up. I'm buying that. Honey, if anyone can drive a man to drink, it's you. <laughs> Another soda water on the rocks. Go easy on this next one, Jerry. Strange things that happened before. That night, the air seemed to feel it.
dial 911 and tell Bobby. The Mackeys wanted to get to the root of their nightclub's ghostly occurrences. They turned to psychic Patricia Michelle. Hmm. What's it mean? It means, hmm. Look, I'd just as soon you and your wife wait here. Uh, Carl, can you show me the basement? Yeah, sure. I guess. Wait a minute. Are you all right? <laughs> you didn't see the will. You, you mean they're right? Right. About what? About everything. This, this place. Look, we got to get out of here. You go. I need to be alone. There's an old story about a well in the basement and what got tossed into. What does that got to do with anything? Well, maybe everything. They said it happened a hundred years ago. The woman was found murdered, all cut up. They caught the two killers. On the day of their hanging, the first man went down without a sound. Then the, the judge tried to make a deal with the other. If he told where he, where he put her head, he'd only get life. You bastard. Tell us. I'll tell you nothing. Wait! I curse you. And men like you, many think that they can judge me. Any man who presumes to interfere with the work of the Dark Lord shall suffer for all time. May your God help you. <laughs> they say he was hung right outside. Anything else you haven't told us? Why didn't you say something earlier? Would it have made a difference? You okay? I'm fine. We have to talk. You're crazy. Both of you, you're crazy. Now, what you're saying is in order to put things right, I gotta tear down my nightclub, dig down a hundred or so feet, and look for a well that may or may not exist, and then I gotta reunite this woman's head with her body? Come on. That's not all. I also felt a, a very strong threat, anger, directed at I'm the not people. doing it. I can't do it, and I won't do it. Mr. Mackey, you're next. What? Whatever it is that lives here is determined to punish the men responsible for keeping it here. Today, the responsible man is you. You are the owner. Wait a minute. You just wait one minute. Are you sure? Nothing can be certain, but I take this warning very seriously. Talk to your husband. 
<sighs> hey, baby, it's all right. We can figure something out. No, it's not that. Uh, I'm going to be issued a subpoena to appear in municipal court. Richard Lawson is suing us for damages, claims we're responsible for what happened to him in the men's room. Emotional damages, he's calling it. He wants the court to order an exorcism or shut us down. I guess Bobby made legal history. First ever lawsuit over a hunt. And for some reason, Bobby didn't want me to go to the trial. But the night it was over and the verdict was announced, I found out why. In an unprecedented ruling, the judge decided in favor of the bar's owner. The judge said the alleged ghost attack on Lawson was not the result of negligence. Therefore, Richard Lawson was not entitled to damages. Lawson responded by saying that any future incidents should be on the judge's conscience and not his, a charge the judge swiftly rejected. In Wilder, Kentucky, Chris Baelish reporting. Well, congratulations, Bobby. Yeah, hooray for the home team. Could I get a glass of ice water? Make him a double, Vicky. I'm buying. <laughs> Bobby, I just wanted to say that I... Forget it. You're not mad? Hell no. You know how much TV advertising costs these days? Anytime you want to sue me, you go right ahead. <laughs> anyway, I felt funny when my lawyer told me who I was suing. I mean, I don't understand what... Well, I mean, I always knew that, you know, or I thought that Bobby owned the club. I never knew that you were the boss. Anyway, it was nothing personal. It's for tax reasons, that's all. I I'm still the owner. It's just the, the deed's in your name. The ghost was sworn to punish the person who was keeping it here, the owner. Now I understood why Bobby didn't want me at the courthouse. So? I'm making this tape for a reason. In case something happens to me. Bobby did what he had to do, I guess. I don't know. We tried to sell the place, but nobody's buying. So all we do is sit here and wait. And wait. To this day, Janet Mackey is listed on county papers as the owner of Bobby Mackey's. I won't come in here alone because uh, of what's happened to me in the past. It scares me because I honestly think that there is something here will hurt me if I'm by myself. Because they're after me, no doubt about that. I think that the reason why Bobby turned the ownership over to me, that he's really afraid they're going to get him. I certainly wouldn't put the danger on her and take danger off of me. I, I don't believe there's any danger to begin with. It was strictly a career move, a timely thing, a circumstantial thing. and had nothing to do with, with anybody being in danger because I've never seen anybody in any danger in here whatsoever. I think Bobby Mackey's very much in danger. Local writer Doug Hensley spent five years researching the club. That because Bobby Mackey has got on television shows and radio talk shows and whatever, and has mocked the spirits and has teased them and has said there is no Alonzo Walling, there is no Pearl Bryant on my property or in my building. I believe the day is going to come and it's been predicted by several psychics. The day is going to come when they are going to try to kill Bobby. The attack in the men's room is still fresh in Richard Lawson's mind. I put my hands in the wash basin right here to wash my hands. And as I put my hands in this basin, this metal garbage can right beside the wash basin just violently took off and it slammed like that right into the wall and it, it, it kept beating. And I turned around very violently to find out what in the world is going on and there stood an image of a man. And he kept repeating to me the words, die game. And I was getting tingly inside, I got woozy and I went out on the floor completely. I mean, I was out and they had to call 911 to come in here and revive me from me being unconscious. That ladder, it started 
right from that pipe right there, it started wobbling. It wasn't no nothing like I'd ever seen. It had trampled. It just wasn't walking. It was coming towards her. Just like in a spin, like a tornado type thing, banging against the wall and carrying on. And I couldn't move. And I thought, well, this is it, you know. I'm either dead or it's going to, it's after me and my child. Psychic Patricia Michelle witnessed the evil that lives within Bobby Mackey's. I had these very eerie feelings as I started walking through this basement, cold chills. But then in my mind, I could see a well. And when I saw it, I saw a head in it. Bobby Mackey continues to play his music for the fans every weekend who come out despite the ghosts. There's nothing here. I mean, nothing to be gotten rid of. I don't think there's anything such as that on the face of the earth. Well, if it happened to you, you if, you would. If, if you would. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, when you get when you, you show something. Me a, you show me a ghost. You show me a ghost, and, and I'll ride. I couldn't show you, because you never would be down I'll ride the mechanical here. bull in the nude. Well, you ride it in the nude. You get ready, because they're here. Hat. And you might, have to go, you might have to do that, because they're here. And if someday they will grab you right by, from well, behind, you won't be the over there. <laughs> well, I'll have to buy you one tomorrow. <laughs> what compels the haunting events we've seen tonight? Why do people experience and report the extraordinary, sometimes at great risk to their own credibility? All we know for certain is that there are many more stories like these, stories of real ghosts.